Hey everybody, Wes Luther here with Secure Acres Natural Bees. We're outside the welcome hive right now, and as you can see, it's kind of nasty outside, so we're not going to be going into the beehives or anything today. Instead, we're going to have a discussion about treatment-free beekeepers, so we'd like if you join along. If you could, like the video, give a comment, and if you want to keep up with our beekeeping videos, be sure to subscribe, and uh, we'll all have a good time. So here we go. All right, so today what we're basically trying to do is you know, I've heard a lot of negative stigma about having treatment-free beekeeping, and there's a lot of th rumors and myths going around that, you know, us, our family as beekeepers, we actually have disagreements with. Um, and so today what we're going to do is we're basically going to dissect uh, a lot of these rumors and basically just, you know, talk about like what we do as treatment-free beekeepers um, and why we think it's beneficial um, to, uh, to our bees. So first off, the biggest myth I hear when it comes to treatment-free beekeeping is, is that bees today in North America cannot survive without some form of treatment. If they don't have treatment, they will die and they, they just require that human intervention, otherwise they just can't simply survive anymore. Well, you know, we have uh, two bases of argument that we would like to present. Uh, for one, um, if we look to the wild where bees stay in trees and you know uh, other like sheds or anywhere like that, there are plenty of bees in the wild that survive right now and they receive no form of treatment. Um, you know they don't get strips, they don't get oxalic acid vapor or any of that stuff. They survive on their own. Um, we have actually a bee colony that's in a, sh in a shack uh, on the towards the end of our property. Um, and these bees have survived here for about 10 years inside this shack and they've never been interfered with nobody's going up there treating the bees as far as i know um and they're doing just fine and you know it's we we think it's pretty cool because whenever those bees cast swarms and we know they do they are providing the environment with some you know really healthy bees and bees that are adapted to survive without any types of treatment so regardless of what you've heard there are bees that survive in the wild they do it all the time uh, they deal with varroa they deal with small hive beetles they deal with uh, wax moths and all kinds of other things uh, and they survive just fine um, the other re the other basis of an argument we have is if you read thomas seeley's book the lives of bees it's an excellent read i highly recommend it i know you'll love it too if you check it out um, he, in his book, he talks about how bees survive in the wild and how swarms act and like types of hives they look for. Well, they did a, a test where they basically, somewhere in Europe, they took a bunch of beehives and a bunch of bees and they basically just set them in this location and they watched them without treating them to see how they would survive. And at first they had like 50% loss and then one year they actually had like 80% loss. And, but there were always some bees that survived. And as the bees survived, they would actually grow in numbers. And over time, proving that bees can survive, it takes them a while to adapt. Because you got to understand, bees evolve a lot quicker than we do. Um, with them, they, you know, they have a disease and they can get used to that illness pretty quickly. Um, you know, it might take a few generations, but, you know, that comes and goes with bees. So, um, you know, we know that they can survive and in their test these bees did survive where uh and they were staying in langstroth hives too i mean we keep ours in the horizontal hives uh but you know so don't believe that bees just were, have to have treatment because it's not true um the truth is they can survive they just need a little time um and so and uh one other thing i want to talk about is you know if we're talking about helping honeybees and we are talking about giving them the best chance of survival they have. And, you know, ultimately our goal should be that if humans are no longer on Earth, then we would hope the honeybees could still survive. Um, so, uh, ultimately our goal is to be able to propagate the forest and the woods with good swarms of bees. Uh, so they can survive over time. They can find those tree hollows. They can adapt. They can do well. Uh, so... If we think about two different types of beekeepers, we have one beekeeper who is always treating their bees with, we'll say mite strips, and they always give their bees mite strips. And then you have a beekeeper who has his bees and his or her bees, and he and they don't, you know, treat or anything like that. 
So both of these beekeepers, their hives will cast swarms at some point. Even if they try to prevent, I mean, sooner or later, you're going to have a hive that casts swarms. We let our, we let our bees swarm whenever they want. Uh, but that's besides the point. Um, whenever they swarm and they, they cast swarms into the forest, who do you think, which swarm do you think has the best chance of survival? The one that is reliant on treatment all the time from a beekeeper that always treats the bees or the bees that are already adapted and don't have that requirement for uh, some kind of disease intervention or something like that. So you have to think that whenever we as treatment free beekeepers are casting swarms into the forest and we're, and we're, we're propagating that way, uh, we are providing the environment with some healthy bees and these bees can survive a lot better without human intervention than bees that have always been treated all their lives. So that's a big difference. And, uh, you know, one other thing I want to point out, um, when it comes to treating or not treating, when it comes to treating bees, you are for spending more money. And so that's going to cost you a little bit more every year. And, you know, I know you might say, well, your bees have a higher chance of survival, but I would tell you that, you know, we catch our bees and these little swarm traps right here. So we don't, you know, we don't buy packages and nucleus hives. Like we catch our bees in the wild. So we're getting swarms. You know, I assume one of our, a few of our swarms have come from uh, the bee shack on the hill that hasn't been treated. And those are going to be some healthy bees and they're going to have a much higher chance of survival. So uh, it's just, it's an interesting discussion. And to be honest with you, I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Um, I think it's good to have these discussions about these types of things and, you know, treatment free, it's, it's something that it kind of, I mean, we used to treat our bees, but then we kind of got to the point where we were like, you know, we don't really know if we're doing the best for honeybees as a whole, if we're always having to intervene and give them some type of treatment. Uh, so it's an interesting thought. So. Make sure you make a comment or something like that. I'd love to hear what you have to say. You know, we're not fighting here or anything like this. This is just beekeepers talking about the best way to keep their bees. So I think that just about covers it, and we'll see you soon.